Hey everyone, welcome to Teller Community Call today, September 21st. Uh, yeah, should be a good one. Um, quick announcement. So as you guys know, we're doing a biz dev call today, but um, on the dev side, um, just kind of keep you guys all up to date. Uh, we made a new poll into Telliot. So update your indexes.json. So at request of the other big thing going on right now, which is is at the request of the Ample team. Uh, we're doing, if you guys saw, we opened up a governance proposal into Ampleforth, uh, part due. So we shall be trying to become their third Oracle. Uh, it's super exciting. So um, we're talking with uh, their, their team and their community, trying to just show them why it makes a little bit of sense for them. Um, so definitely go voice your support. There's a forum. Just even even if you guys just want to go say like, "Wow, this looks like such a great idea," <laughs> or like go thumbs up, you know, like the post or something to make sure it gets to the top and people see it. Um, those are all great things that you can do. So anyway, um, that's kind of about it from the dev side. We're we're still deep in dev mode on Telerx and uh, things are going along great. So Mike, off to you. And make sure you check out, we have some new content that Nick put out uh, yeah. on Oracle Extractable Value. Um, like and share it and uh, give us your, you know, chime in, let you know, let us know what you thought about the article. If you have any questions, like just engage with us about the topic um, if it's if it's over your head in any way. Um, yeah, and I did, uh, Brendan and I were on a podcast last night. We'll share with you guys when we get the link. It was, it was more on like a soft, what's it like being a crypto founder story um type thing and, and so it was fun um and then next week i'm doing a meetup up here in maryland um of course it's virtual sadly but um i'll be giving a presentation on the oracle landscape so just comparing the different oracles and going over teller and uh, answering some questions so we'll send that link out i think that's next monday as well so um, lots of fun stuff Cool. So yeah, I mean, just to kick this off, I think our goal was to have a open ended conversation about all forms of biz dev for us, which is marketing, outreach, uh, acquiring users, integrations and things like that. Um, just sort of having like a transparent internal conversation about it. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, ideally, we would have um, more community members involved in the live version of this conversation, and hopefully we can move more towards that in future versions of this. And by no means should this be the first and, and last version of this. It's something could be quite regular uh, that, we could, that we could start doing. Um, it, but it starts with doing the first one. Yeah, um, I mean, to kind of kick off, do you want to give like a summary of like, so like, I think there's two pieces, like A, like, what what's kind of the goal of mm -hmm. our biz dev strategy like who are we trying to outreach to and then also like what have we done and then we can kind of see like what then then we'll talk about what we might want to change yeah i think it's a good it's a great place to to start there too because there's a there's a bit of a transition happening around the sort of focal points of who we're talking to so up until now, the focus has been on acquiring users, and by no means are we shifting that focus, and I'll get to that in a second, but it's about uh, messaging towards projects that need oracles and uh, projects that also value censorship resistance and, and, and decentralized protocols that, uh, that sort of jive with us in terms of our sort of values around um, the way we built Teller and the way we bring data on chain. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, th this is just, that's a real simple, the simple task at hand from the biz dev uh, perspective is how can we get more people using the product that we're building? Well, and I mean, I'd say like you have like two potential targets. There's like, really you have like the token holders as well. <laughs> so, you know, like we, we, we usually don't like to talk about them as far as like a, people we generally target but if you you know if, if 
if it's Chainlink or, or any Oracle project, like you have two sort of main groups that you target towards and it's like users and holders. Um, yeah, we've sort of purposefully not marketed towards the holders. And that's been like the big point of contention with like yeah. our marketing has been that we have avoided doing those things uh, as both a matter of aesthetics <laughs> and, but also like a strategic, we have a strategic point around around doing that because we think one is very short term focused and it builds a different type of community than the long game that we're playing and the type of community we want to foster is a different set of people. But um, that's an open ended problem because you can't yeah. You can't ignore this. The speculator class is such a massive part of crypto that it's it's hard to ignore it. And so we've I mean, it's still an open sort of internal and external discussion. And we're sort of always sort of, you know, checking our pulse about that topic and, and ways well, I think it. Yeah. Around. Well, I think like from the beginning, we had always said, like, you know, we don't want you don't want to play the games of shilling fake things to to grow investors or like, you know, going you know, like you can see like the Cardano marketing class of, you know, you make it, these amazing claims that you're going to be doing amazing things just to, to get investors on board. And, you know, we had always said like there, there's, you want to sort of start on the getting users and then you, you put out information, you, you try and educate them. So like you want to be, you want to be all of the rage because you are all of the rage, you know, like people, users should come first and then, and then you have good press release and good, good sort of exposure and good education around that, around your product, you know, so like educating the space on like why you guys are, the, why we're the best Oracle out there um, yeah. has always been kind of our focus. Um, yeah. It, it, the way we've been talking about it lately has been like, if you build it, they will come. The sort of field of dreams uh, analogy, like being that, like if we build the best Oracle we can build and we gain users, the traction with the speculators and investors will come. Uh, and that leads to a much more stable long-term project than if you sort of build a really high market value and you have a ton of people trading your token, but you, you haven't nailed the product and user part yet. Uh, and you've also seen that like the, the projects that raised a ton of ICO money. And so they, they sort of got to the finish line before they ever had to prove anything or build anything. And, and we, you know, just to remind you guys, we came out of the very fresh post ICO era. And so like the way we thought about launching Teller and building Teller from the very beginning was like, we're not going to be that at all costs. And we're sticking to yeah. that. But, um, um, yeah, just to talk yeah, about I mean, like who we could market to, I could just sort of. Well, I mean, what have we done so far? You know, like what have we tried? I think in the past, so people know. Like you know, like I think like we've focused a lot on. So we've done we've done hackathons. So sadly, like by the time we actually got a marketing budget, it was probably around like this time last year. Mm -hmm. So the first time we actually had any sort of tangible, you know, more than T-shirts for the team type of budget um and so we've, we've done we've sponsored a few hackathons right? we sponsored a few reimagined conferences um what else have we done we've, we've done like a few like spuddies ran a few twitter competitions to pass out t-shirts and things like that you know th those are smaller of course um well early early on we did amas in we Tele did lots of amas because like those are free because they were free or they cost like $200 or something like yep. that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, what we noticed just to, going way back and talking about the AMAs, what we noticed about that was uh, it was kind of like, it was hard to tell how effective they were because they were free and they only took like an hour of our time. We continued to do them because it like, it didn't hurt. But the results, I would I would say, weren't really there. I think. But it, yeah, I mean, but we so we can move into that now too. You know, like what have we found results with? You know, because I'd say like there's results at getting users, and like so, you know, we we can we can all just be like honest. It's like it's come a lot slower than we would have hoped. Um, you know, like it's, um, it's coming. But like you know, who have been wins in the past? 
Like, and we can look at like what's worked on them. Like we've, we've had wins, like the original win, I would say like, so if you guys knew, like we had a pull request in compound in like, what was that? 2019 December. And then like, it, it was like almost gone through and then their CEO shot it down. Um, did we also have one with Gnosis as well as, yeah. yeah. And, so and those were really excited about that. And, and you know how both of those ones came up it was Brenda and I flew out and met the team out in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we met the compound guys out in San Francisco and then same with the Gnosis people. So we were friends with the Gnosis people from our time in Berlin. Um, so it was like, you know, those were very handholdy things, like, I guess you could say. And, and then, I mean, but that, that's, that's been almost the MO of what's worked so far, I would say. Because I mean, like, then you have like, the other, aside from any little project that's just used just for a brief period of time, you have like Liquidy. Liquidy is like the weird one, actually. So like how Liquidy found us was like, they, they kind of found us looking through our technical docs. Um, you know, they're very, very technical. It wasn't any sort of marketing we did. It was almost just like a, they did deep research in the space, which is cool. Um, and then I would say like, so you have Rye. Rye is actually similar to Liquidy, I would say. Um, because they came to us. They came to us and it, it didn't have, I mean, Rye, we, so Rye, the big reason they had heard of us is because they stole JG, our former employee. Um, so like, if you if if we have to train you guys and ship you off to other <laughs> to other protocols to get integrated, we'll just be a dev dev training shop. Um, but no, like in all seriousness, um, that was you know it's great that they heard about us that way, but it wasn't like anything we did necessarily <laughs> uh, on the biz dev side. And then I mean, there's Ample, um, who it looks like we're we're doing well with, but I mean Ample. Ample's like a two year long process. We're basically best friends with these guys at this point. <laughs> um, you know, we've met them all several times in person and um, it, it, we're still trying to close it. Um, and then I, one other one that we could point out would be like, uh, so the Ricochet project. We've had like Ricochet, Komodo or, or all of those projects with Mike. Um, but that's another one where we, <laughs> We, we trained <laughs> trained him into a good sensei as far as from the beginning of his crypto journey he's been with teller yep so uh and, you know and i don't know what's going to happen with xfil as another one that looked like it could be a win it's still open X, so the xfil's a no just they got they kind of got engulfed by synthetics yeah so it was that was a small victory i still uh, it, it was it, they were from a hackathon uh like they're yep. synthetics developers um and just and these people are, are credible talented developers they're going to be in the space for a while and this might this is a seed planted that might come to fruition later and maybe not with this specific expo project because it was a hack and who knows where it'll actually go um it'll maybe not go anywhere and just be a synthetics thing but um i remember yeah. in that conversation with them they were like they stumbled upon the uh, upon us because we sponsored the one of the hackathons, and they, you know, obviously won bounties and, and prizes as well. Um, and uh, they learned about us through that, and that's exactly the result that we want to get from sponsoring these hackathons: is have like talented, credible developers find us that way. And that's the best way to sort of shill ourselves is through this like non-shilling process of. Uh, of actually having technical discussions about integrating and, and uh, it establishes this relationship and this credibility when you get to really talk. Uh, and that's kind of how we, we established a rapport with, uh, with Ample as well. Is it like, we were just talking about, you know, our projects uh, in, in a sort of one-on-one -on -one way. And um, you get to, you get to, we, I remember our impression, our impression with Ample was like, oh, those are, they're serious people. They think, they're asking all the right questions and they're, you know, they're cool. They're doing things the right way. Um, and they felt the same way about us. And uh, yeah, we just, our goal is to find more of those people and establish relationships with them. And um, yep. I think that's an interesting yeah. point too. It's like the, the conversation around oracles themselves has been very kind of broad. So the more um, like the technical people are kind of looking for those, 
um, those details that kind of get brushed over just in the grand scheme of crypto in general. But when you talk about oracles, it's such a small niche that um, the conversations um, and the technicality of it, uh, when you can d dig into the nuance aspects of it, I think that really um, gets the builders and the developers uh, on board. Yeah, I, and I think you bring up a, 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 a tangent to top, well, not really a tangent, but an, another topic. Of Sorry to reroute. <laughs> how, to compel, how to compel developers from, how, so how to seduce them in, sort of, in, in a way that to think of their Oracle integration isn't just a means to an end to get this data in their protocol to then mm. do what the protocol does. Mm. It's, you know, but like, it's like actually really cool to get your data this way because of how mm. Teller the Oracle data on chain. It's neat. And so like sometimes we're still struggling with like getting that. Uh, uh, I don't think we're struggling. We just really sort of have begun to wrap our heads around like, hey, this is something we should really try and do is, is, is sell people on how cool this is. Um, yeah. Well, because that's like, I'm wondering, you know, like how, like where have people stopped with the integrations? You know, like it, it, it's not like we're having a whole lot of UX failures. Like a lot of me would say like, oh, we need to double down on documentation because it's too hard for people mm. to integrate. Like I would say like, that's actually not the problem. Like, you know, we're, it's, it's not like we're having people start integrating and they're just doing it wrong and they can't figure it out and they fail. Like that, that, that's not really happening. You know, we're not, we're not even getting them to that point, I would say. Like in, in the, you know, like the Excel guys, the Rye guys, the Liquidity guys, like they, they told us they were integrating us and sent us the integration code, like, and, and we helped them fix it a little bit, but they had no, like, I don't even think any of them read our documentation, to be honest. Right. <laughs> they just like looked at the Solidity code and the, the repo and like tried to figure yeah. it out themselves, which is, you know, the power, the super users. Such a developer like, type of thing to do, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to ask for any help. But it um, seems to me like the hump is very, uh, in a way, like ideological versus technical. Like there comes mm -hmm. a point when like the trade-offs or what we prioritize as a product, like it comes to a point where like some users say like, you know, this is very good, but ideologically, like we just don't align in that way. Or like there are some limits that we prioritize, like uh, in, the, in how we build security and also our approach to decentralization that other people say like, you know, this is very good, but like it it uh, pushes the limits of like what our what we need for our product. Um, like the or, integration is a good example of that. Yeah, they yeah. wanted like they wanted it so fast, so unrealistically fast. Yeah, it was just like really cost prohibitive, and it was just like, did you guys even think this through? Like, well, I mean, they went with the centralized oracle because was... that was their only like they protocol yeah. required a centralized oracle in in a sense because any other option was just impossibly expensive. Yeah. That's even the, uh, yeah. Even the ample build, I think, can be a little bit like this in the sense of like, we, you know, tell it as a client is something that essentially says like, we want to submit values, um, how people um, see fit, right? But there's sort of like uh, an element of like, we want to integrate, uh, ample wants to integrate us, but uh, in a way that like compromises a certain sort of like, uh, decentralized integrity integrity that we want to maintain and you can see that in how like you know the emphasis on like these these uh the, the subjectivity of the price has okay. to be so like minimal that in, to the point where like uh, a very degree of like centralized hand holding has to be done well i think um, they're yeah to be fair like if, if you've been following in their discord um, yeah. their community seems to be getting on them about that a little bit yeah um, which is yes. good about like hey fair, you know yeah. how you guys calculate this data yeah. yeah yeah but it's tough i mean one thing that i really like um and it comes with its caveats is like the biz approach of like like meets like um we really try to find we 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 advertise ourselves in such a way that clearly communicates that we work really well with other projects that see things how we see them ideologically mm, sure. yeah but i mean at the same time we i want to be like you know the end goal too is to not have to in a minimal way have our values sort of reflected in which projects we use, you know, like use us. Like, you know, if somebody wants to put on Tally's thoughts on, on chain and that's what they want the Oracle to put on, yes, it's centralized and 
we can tell them it's a bad idea, but you know, like it's yeah. hey, if, if you want to do it, you, 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 we, we shouldn't be the technical limitation that prevents you from using mm -hmm. an Oracle. In that Definitely. Way. Yeah. Yeah. You and know. it should also be cautious about like uh, the degree of like self-selection that 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 creates as a barrier. Um, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, MC Dex was actually a good one because I would say like another project we sort of failed on was like the DYDX one, um, which you know, so they had kind of come to us initially and um, and then eventually ended up using Maker's Oracle. Um, I, th I think they're they're sort of a special case because most people can't use Maker's Oracle. <laughs> they just sort of have like an in there, but um, you know, and it's on Arbitrum. But that's that's a different issue, too. But um, yeah, I mean, the DYDX thing. I think that that had more to do with just personal relationships in a lot of ways. Um, which at the same time, like we we should. You know, like I think we have to be be sort of open to that because there, there's not a whole lot of projects in this space, and I think um, how you sort of handle the personal relationships, as far as you know, like it used to be like like Mike, we had talked about this. You know, whenever we got like Binance as an investor, like it, it used to be the crypto sphere was like broken down in segments of like there were like the San Francisco VC projects and the New York VC projects and the Asia guys who nobody talked to. And then, you know, there was like the Chicago guys who had like Radar Relay and, and you know, it was what Barry Siebert's group. Um, and so like, and then all the projects like you had like 0x versus Airswap was like New York versus San Francisco or whatever. And, you know, like it was, it was these very broken down segment and projects and you had like these little clicks forming and, 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 you know, I think there might still be some of that just like underlying, you know, as far as you, know, you see it, like as far as like the chain link community protects like the chain link projects and then hmm. um whether it's certain you know if if your if your vc is pushing you towards one oracle versus another like how do we sort of overcome those effects um you know should hmm. we be like yeah it makes it really tough well I, so that goes into the whole if they if you build it they will come thing is is like how can we make teller undeniable um even to the point where, uh, you know, this sort of in VC influence uh, is mitigated or you start to win them over too because we're just so undeniable as a project. And I think- Yeah, but I think like getting users, it's like just getting over that hump initially to be like the standard, you know, cause like with, cause like you, you see like we're, we're talking with the Ample guys and they're like, is it like, I don't like the way this dispute process works. And, you know, they're, they're, they're giving us critiques on token weighted voting on governance. And, you know, like it, they're valid critiques. They're there's a million valid critiques on a governance system. Any governance system you put up is going to have its flaws. Um, but like it, it's, it's, it, it's sort of this false equivalence because they're, they're comparing us to Chainlink and their centralized Oracle. You know, like there, there is no dispute mechanisms for those two. Mm -hmm. Like why, why are you even giving us a hard time? Like at least you're introducing some sort of dispute mechanism. And so it, it's, it's not like they're, you know, the, the mental gymnastics, I guess it's, it's not like it, it, we're, we're being fairly compared in a way or, or that people necessarily even like it, it's not even an argument we're undeniably more decentralized than chain link and that they're centralized oracle like um so that's like yeah so like that that's like how do you how do you convince a project that like obviously that, that maybe just doesn't care or or maybe this is like what we're actually testing out is the you know, this was our, our, our one of our early advisors. So like, you guys are actually testing out the hypothesis that people care about decentralization in their oracles. Mm. Um, you know, so like, how do we make people care about it in, in, in the broad sense? I think we need to, that goes back to, into reminding people that what we're doing is really cool here. And I think, um, just to reiterate, it, it is a scarce, it, there's, there's some scarcity around projects that are legit in general in crypto. It's a much smaller world than you guys might realize. Um, and then within that, it's a niche for projects that uh, are also legit and that sort of care about decentralization. And it's our job to find them. And we are doing as best we can to, in a COVID world, it's a little bit tougher, but to be out and going to these events and sponsoring these events and meeting them. And uh, we've noticed um, a, a ton of steam built up over the last two years in that regard. Um, but just to draw a line in, 
and just sort of leave that aside for a second, there's a whole other area that we could focus a lot of energy around in the sort of in between time, in the meantime, while we, we still like, you know, while these seeds that we've planted and are planting eventually bloom when it comes to users, which might be a slow, might be a slow burn there. It's proven to be slower than we want it to be. But there's this whole other subset of users that we could turn around and, 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 and that's the sort of internal um, user to use that uh, broadly, which is our community. And I think we've begin to, begun to see this. And, and I think there's a ton of marketing energy and biz dev energy. If we think of our community members as, as users, as somebody to put biz dev efforts towards, um, to grow this community uh, to be as like exciting and as robust to be a part of. And I think Teller X is like a, a, a huge um, launching point for those efforts to get, um, to grow our, our network of data reporters, um, to grow this as a DAO. Um, I think if, t if Teller, the sort of decentralized community, community, no matter what it is we do, like Oracle aside, if, if Teller is a cool place where cool things in, in crypto are happening, I feel like th this, this is something that will be attractive to, um, to a lot of developers out there. And to the, I think we can gain steam just from that reputation alone. I think from then on, that will sort of transition to acquiring more people that'll, that are, are, are sort of open to building on us. Um, so, and I think that we haven't really sort of, uh, we're just recently wrapping our heads around that, that like, hey, we can actually think of BizDev more, more than just user acquisition, but about like growing this community. I think it's a lot, a lot more fun. There's a lot more to do. Uh, there's a lot more, it's not scarce. There's a lot more abundance out there, out there in terms of people that, uh, are getting into crypto that find these things neat. And so, yeah, I mean, on the user piece though, like you want to make sure that it's, it's like, I always, I, I hate like the, whenever you go to a community and there's like these community specific people in there, you know, and it seems like a closed club at all. Like, you know, like the fanboys of a given project, like whether it's, you know, you, you, you see them, like, like the people with Ada on their Twitter handles or something, and you, you can laugh at mm. them, but you know, like it's, cause you want it to be much broader than just teller. Um, mm. So like you have to make sure that it's, it is much broader than just teller. Um, cause like, yes, yeah, like we, cause we, we fit within a, a certain ecosystem and we plug into different projects. We, yes, we are like our, our own ecosystem and things like that, but you know, like there's, like what's a cool community you guys would want to be a part of would be the question. Like who, who do you think is doing it right there? I was going to say that my experience in the Ampiforth community was, I, I enjoyed that just, in, you know, when we, yeah when we threw that proposal out, it was really cool to see um, the engagement of these members to kind of throw out some really, you know, thoughtful um, disagreements or just, just discourse in general. I thought that was really um, powerful to see. And I think, I think people look at that when they look into a community, they see how, you know, how much, um, price talk versus actual technical talk is going on in this in these chats and uh um yeah i thought that was a cool a cool example of, yeah. of a good pulse cool yeah so, sometimes i think even ethereum in general is like a really good community to model at a higher level and uh mm. sometimes i feel surprised that like there is um it feels unprecedented for like a something on the application layer of ethereum to try to like model the um the approach to community that Ethereum itself takes. And um, that's something that I think is, uh, could really be possible for us, especially in like the, the uh, direction that, that we take in our emphasis of decentralization, decentralization what, alone. What role do they take? Um, I think like credible neutrality in a, in a broad sense. And um, sure. like I, one thing that really comes to mind to me is like, one of the first things that I encountered when I started as an intern here was like, I, I went up on ETH online and uh, I watched a talk by Near Protocol and Near Protocol was, you know, as we know, is a competitor to Ethereum, but if ETH online, which is sponsored by the Ethereum foundation, um, 
uh, you know, it invited its own competitor to speak um, mm. at its, uh, you know, at its own conference. Yeah. And beyond that, it's like Ethereum has no like, you know, we understand DAOs is like a lot of the time it's hard coded like pieces of code that people participate in softly on the shell. But the more that the more I think about Ethereum, it's like very much like even without that hard coded uh, DAO structure, it, it, it very much functions in that way in terms of the very different ways that people get involved, either technically or non-technically. Um, so it would be, I don't know if that's specific enough, but that's something that- Yeah, I but I mean, if you look at like what tangible actions, I mean, this is like, what well, you know, the, I, ideally I'd love to come out like what, what sort of tangible things we can sort of do, you know, like it's versus just like the feeling of, how we sort of word things, which which is important, and you know, like I think we've done a lot on the branding aspect of it. But uh, yeah. you know, like early on, like that's like a lot of people point to like Ethereum. You know, we've talked about it in the past here. Like you had you had consensus, um, yeah. who bootstrapped a bunch of big projects, and you had basically paid for a whole bunch of things to get kickstarted on Ethereum. And then you also had, um, you know, Vitalik, for instance. Vitalik like lived on a couch for four years. Yeah. traveling to every meetup he could yeah um mm. you know same with a lot of those early guys like joe lubin was talking to everyone um, yeah they were spreading the word and, and obviously like they had boatloads of money so it wasn't like um, yeah. not that we could necessarily replicate it to that scale as far as like Definitely. oh we're gonna fund every project that comes our way that's awesome but yeah um you know like they, <laughs> there was a lot of like hustle there as well yeah, the specific piece about like being a personable evangelist, I think would be really helpful. Like being that person who can show up to the hackathon and like, you know, look someone in the eye and like communicate why we think like decentralization is beautiful. It would be really cool. Um, we probably yeah, touched on that, that like 12 minutes ago, but. Uh, what well, I think you guys get, bring, do bring up a good point. Like it's sort of, a, I mean, not to make it simple, but like it's sort of about making friends with all the, everyone, like every single project, even whether, whatever we think of it, it doesn't matter. But because um, I think there's that hump, the technical hump, which you said, but before that, there's like the trust factor and sort of familiarity that takes a little bit of time. And um, having that like credibility and like, you know, yeah, just openness. No. Yeah. So like, what do you think we should do from there? Like a marketing perspective? Should we just have like all of our employees, we dedicate you guys like an hour a day. You have to go, you have to go make friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, go make friends. <laughs> yeah. Like, like we could, I mean, it, it might. It's it might not, work. I mean, it's, there's, that's not unprecedented as, as a, we might not have the, the, the personnel to sort of really make that a reality right now, but like. Like, should we want to like, that, that can be a bounty, like just like a, friendly person <laughs> i mean if it is it starts with us because we're more familiar right. i guess than a lot of people but um say we try it for a week or two and if it doesn't if we're bad at making friends then we um we figure something else out it's kind of like we want to do the anti-ambassador program that you typically see in crypto which is you hire people that are speculators of your coin to then go and hop into other communities and be friendly but you're really just shilling like the token action or whatever but like this would be doing it from like a, an actual um a non-cynical approach um yeah. actually wanting to share and and, and uh, make a difference and uh and I think, yeah, I think that there's definitely something we can do. I mean, I think that, again, just to repeat, like, I think that speaks to making Teller, our community, uh, like a, a, something really special and tangible. Like, it's hard to describe, but when you when you show up there, you're treated a certain way. We're doing things a certain way. And I think that becomes undeniable. Um, it's just like, Tally, it's your experience of just being in the Ethereum community. It's it's something that people now can talk clearly about because it's so, it's so it's large enough that it, enough people have shared that experience that it's really tangible, but I think we have to start there and trying to make Teller that, um, a small version of that. I think if we get too time, look, I could be wrong. And I also share opposing opinions to my statement right now, but like if we focus too much on the result of getting a user, then we, the danger is 
you can start to ass assess, well, there's something wrong if we're not getting that user across the line. And what, so it's, it's, you're coming from this perspective of, okay, something's wrong. And we have to then start flapping our hands in the, wing, the wind. And like, you know, you, you, you can start to mess things up. And maybe the reality is actually we're doing nothing wrong. We're doing everything right. It's just a longer game than we want it to be. Um, so I just think, I, I try to keep that in mind. Not that we should not try to get users. It's just about like uh, yep. that perspective. Um, yeah, you just want to make sure that they, you keep the almost the pipeline full, if you will. Um, you know, because yeah. you, you can like because there's one thing about you have you know you're you're slowly getting users. Like you, even if you're getting like one a quarter, like that could be like, that would be just fine if you're if you're getting decent sized users once a quarter. It's just like, you know, making sure that like it's not drying up and, and maybe, you know, or, or it's not like you, you don't hit any sort of roadblocks along the way. And, and like, why isn't it coming in um, would be the questions. And yeah, just keep Yeah, I know. think, yeah. I think ultimately is we need to find more ways to be, to get the word out there about who we are and, and, uh, um, to go into some tangible things, I mean, sponsoring more things, getting more speaking uh, engagements, uh, sponsoring more hackathons. Uh, you know, it, there's just there's a limitation there um, in terms of what what events are really even happening at any given point. But uh, we've really ramped that up over the last year, and I think a lot of a lot of results have come f from those things because they see us. You know, they see us at those events, and um, I think we just need to do a lot more of that. And hopefully, with this, you know, this COVID era, hopefully it's on the way out. Um, and that 20, 2022, we can, you know, actually go in person to uh, many more of these events and and establish those relationships even stronger. Um, yeah. All right. Well, like, just like uh, before we, I had a couple of. Uh, potentially dumb ideas, but um, I love it. In terms of tangible, I mean, what what is the downside to um, earlier we were talking about um, in terms of like marketing, how, you know, some of these advantages of like, okay, let's say chain link versus us as an as a decentralized Oracle. I feel like a lot of people don't uh, don't really think about, you know, chain link as being like centralized. Like, why can't we put out um, content that's like, okay, very clear about like, okay, pros and cons of using Chainlink versus um, Teller. And like, you know, here are our biggest weaknesses and like, you know, what are we doing about them? That kind of stuff. The other is- Yeah, it's a good one. The other is like, um, Nick, in terms of like tangible stuff and how you were talking about how some of our biggest users came from, you know, they like reached out to us and are like more of these like dev power user uh, sort of users that Mike was talking about where it's like, well, why can't we like reverse engineer that? Like what, what are like, you know, seven of these projects that we want to work with that align with our values in terms of like actually care about decentralization. And why can't we make integration so easy, come up with like mock integration for them and reach out to their devs. And then we have that marketing material as well. Like, you know, here's actually, yeah, we've, we've done that in the past and it's done. Is it like a failed experiment? Like what is, no, it's, what I mean, was the outcome? I, I think we did that with a few projects. It was, it was okay. I mean, it definitely opened up conversations for sure. Mm. So I definitely yeah. think we should do more of that. I think we just ran into the limitations of like the dev building that we needed to focus on Teller. Uh, we just didn't have the dev uh, team capable of, of doing that without being like a, you know, shutting down everything else that we're doing. Um, yeah, that was actually something that Spuddy was supposed to do, um, which I think he's busy now. But um, it, we're, we wanted to put together like a list of all the potential projects in the space and like just rank them. And <laughs> and then like if, if they're perfect and we're not in there, we're just going to go and like go randomly bump into them at Starbucks with like a GitHub pull request or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's no the, the, those are definitely and that that's like what i want to focus on as i get yeah. some time 
So good yeah, because there's, some, there's something different. Not, not to sort of just keep on going. I don't know how long you guys want to keep this going, but like there's something different about uh, a pull request into a community or like a, a mock integration that's like already built the bow on it, and you show up to a community that might have a um, a ton of technical people in, like the vocal people in that community are devs themselves, showing up with that and then having a discussion, uh, it, I can imagine being uh, much more fruitful or, or respected, uh, or I can imagine it being much more open. I think people would be more open-minded to that versus um, some people just don't have time to just say, to answer a question like, hey, why don't you guys use Teller? And it's just like, I don't know, why would we? And you know, we need to have more uh, energy around answering that question. I think the best way to answer it is to sort of, here's the proof in the pudding. We've sort of like built out a spec of how it could look. Like, what do you think now? And then you can have a real, a real what comes next is a real, um, uh, it's a very um, fruitful conversation. It's a technical conversation where like, then, then you're starting to like maybe box with that person and earn their res respect and vice versa. Um, those, I think we need to do more of that. And now that we have like a, a bigger team, I think we could start doing that more if you guys are game. Yeah, okay. it's like coming to a party with a housewarming gift. And then, yes. you know, it's more welcoming. Like being the DJ. Like, it's what? It's like being the, being the DJ or, or guy who brings the keg and it's just like, <laughs> like, okay, come on in. Yeah. The, yeah, thing exactly. that would be, the other thing that would be super helpful too is like, just an FAQ of like common, you know, pushbacks that we run into in like different communities. Cause like, I don't, you know, I want to spend more time uh, writing and building code. Uh, and so I'm not like in all these other like pockets or ample force community, like super active or anything, um, reading like the various arguments. So it'd be nice to have like, okay, like, you know, you don't have enough miners or reporters, like, okay, like what, what are the common things that we've said? Like, what do we want to emphasize that kind of stuff? Like an FAQ for those kind of things. And recreating yeah. what we're doing with Ampleforth is like what we can, re by doing these mock integrations or something like that, or, or proposals or PR requests, pull requests, like it, it, it like shifts the conversation to like real specifics at that point. If you keep it just general, like why not use Teller, then it becomes this like amorphous, it's it's too hard to like nail down. Okay, so what's really the objection here? You know, um, it could stay in this sort of philosophical realm where, where you almost don't get anywhere, and it's just like a he said, she said kind of thing. And we want to the more we can like trim that away with saying like here's a real practical look at what it could look like. Now tell us your objections, and I, we've done that with Ample. And I think if we could re reconnect that, that'd be or I said reconnect my my computer's disconnecting <laughs> am I here you're here okay good all right uh anyway I think I want to wrap it up by just saying uh, um piggybacking off of something that you've you've noticed Tally with the whole ethereum world is like thinking of teller as building a public good and uh and if we focus on making that public good just as good as possible, and Tellerx is going to be a big step forward in that, I think that is a, a huge place that we could we could focus our, our our efforts in the meantime while we wait on on uh, some of these slower burn user acquisitions like Ample that take you know over a year to sort of get going. And I think it's going to be just as hard if we want to get into Compound or any of these other protocols. It's going to be this slow process. Yep. Uh, but that's, that's just part of the game. It's cool. And in the meantime, we'll just keep on getting better and better and better. So. Cool. So everybody watching this on recording, though, like we want, you know, we would hope that there'd be more people here live. But since you guys are watching on a recording, like. Yeah, and let's take it to the Biz Dev channel on Discord. Yes, exactly. um, and let's, let's come up with some good tangible ideas and, and let's push it forward. Um, let's make sure we're actually doing something. Yep. And, the word out there let us have it yeah this was fun um <laughs> it was a good at least it was a good conversation it was pretty open so uh, cool ryan everyone thanks for being here we want to we got three questions should we just pop oh. them out real quick 
Go for sure. it. Sure, we ha- we have to. Can a decentralized oracle be environmentally friendly? Sure. Yeah. I guess we're moving. Maybe it's one hundred percent electric. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think we're not environmentally friendly currently. I think that just goes on to what chain we build on. Yeah. Well, isn't also moving away from proof of work inherently less energy yes. intensive? For sure. And then Theoretically. we're on top of Ethereum who's doing that as well. So, um, yep. Go green, go Teller. What are the goals for early 2022? Users and have Telerx launched. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then last but not least, where can I buy a Teller shirt? I'll uh, we have a little shop uh, on Square that I'll I'll pop the link in the description for the YouTube video. But that's where you can buy your shirt. You can get one of these. I swoosh TRB. We have uh, hats. Another. We have a Teller T-shirt, and we have swag bag or a tote bag. Uh, yeah, we'd be happy to sell you a shirt or two. Cool. Awesome. Right. Thanks cool. for coming. That's everyone. it. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you guys next week. See you.